It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Bucks and the Lions. And it's all up next. The seating capacity is 65,000 at Ford Field, and we are right around that number today. A good crowd on hand and seemingly ready to go in the Motor City. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here, as it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Detroit Lions. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gauden. Now, Charles, you and I, we've done a lot of games together. Always seems like we're rehashing the same storylines. Turnovers, of course, always a big story. Quarterback play, running backs, yada, yada, yada. But getting ready for this one, one word kept coming to mind, and that's preparation. Well, it's critical to be prepared physically, mentally. When you think about getting ready for an NFL game, you have to wonder, what will they throw at us that maybe we haven't seen before? Two-minute drill, maybe different things like that. Got to be prepared. You're exactly right. Jack Fox has us ready to go, and we are underway here at Ford Field. Here's Devin Tompkins on the return. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. And bringing them out is the top pick in the 2018 draft. Fiery competitor from Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield. And he's a guy who plays with a lot of emotion. He's learned how to channel it really positively because when he throws the football downfield and makes a big play, he'll be the first guy downfield to celebrate with you. But also, when his team needs that confidence, when they need that jolt, they turn to him, and he's ready to provide it. Mayfield to throw on the first play. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. He did a fine job there of not hitting it before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. A first carry for Rashad White. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short. So it'll be third and less than a yard. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four-down territory, that really opens things up for you. A three-yard gain and enough for the first down. Faced with their first third down conversion opportunity and able to punch it through and pick it up on the ground. And to me, doing it on the ground sends a different type of a message than throwing the football. And, you know, let's face it, we've done a lot of games together. How often have we seen third down turn into an automatic passing down no matter what the yard is? Yeah, and last thing you want, that opening drive to go three and out. You got everything scripted lined up let's get some points on the board and they're able to avoid that three and out that O line they cleared a big hole there on that run the athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve and we're seeing it here not only they're controlling things right the line of scrimmage but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels you know get to linebacker spot the secondary spot getting all the way downfield with their blocking which helps keep the running back clean they'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon so eight yards on the completion there, and it'll be second in a couple. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Ball on the 39, here's second in a couple. Play fake, Mayfield finding Otten once more. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. We got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice, sustained series to begin the game, and it will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? 
I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. A first down throw for Mayfield. This ball complete to Trey Palmer. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. Mayfield looks to throw. It's caught. This is right. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. A well-executed 22-yard gain. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical. They've been crisp. And as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Here's White. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Rashad White, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Buccaneers are on the board first here this afternoon. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal, they've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good, and that makes the score 7-0. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Here comes Khalif Raymond from his end zone. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. So here are the Lions now as they get set for their opening drive. And they're brought out by a former number one overall pick coming off one of his best seasons ever in year seven of his career, now in year eight, Jared Goff. And at one point, the ascension of Jared Goff was really, really strong. Back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, took his team to the Super Bowl and came really within one quarter of winning it. But since that time, he's had bouts of inconsistency. And that's been the struggle for him as he tries to get back to the form he showed earlier in his career. Goff on first down. So the completion gets him just a yard, and that's going to bring up second down. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. They work now on second and nine. Here's Gaw. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Not a great start dropping his first target, but let's face it, it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Play action. It's gone. And it's knocked away and incomplete. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. Back deep for the Bucs is Devin Tompkins. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. 
They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7 0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7 0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. They'll start the drive with a give to White. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 43 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurdling through them. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. Evans has it left side. So that'll be no better than an incompletion, and it'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Second and ten. To throw, Mayfield. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now, and it's Buccaneer football. As they've got it with a first and ten. They will run with White out of the shotgun. John Kaminsky got him down defensively. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback. They also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Now a second down throw for Mayfield. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. Third and seven now. The same thing went through your mind is mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with the ball. Juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to burn down. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions 35. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. First down, here's White. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. On second down, they'll run with White. And a pretty good run as he'll get this down close to a first at the Lions 26. A gain of eight there on the eighth play of the drive about controlling the football and controlling the drive. And with runs like that, they'll continue to do exactly that. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. Here's Mayfield. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to have a box first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. 
And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. A good job in coverage there. They took away his top read on the play, so he went through his progressions and ended up settling on his running back who scored on their last possession. But the coverage held. It goes incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Mayfield to throw it. Godwin's got it. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A 20-yard touchdown. And the Buccaneers go up by two touchdowns. Another impressive drive, so they're two for two. Two touchdowns, Charles, a great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, and not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced a punt to get the ball back, and they've played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good, and it's now 14 to nothing. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Khalif Raymond now. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive but at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. Pretty solid run here on first down. Almost picked up another first, but he appears to be a few inches short. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive line and creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. They'll fake the give. Now golf. And that's to Amin Rossing Brown. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. It's a gain of 34. Two minutes to play, first half, it's 14 to nothing. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Here's Goff. He'll go right back to St. Brown. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. Last play went for over 30 yards. This one not quite as big, but still over 20. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. And meanwhile, Goff's throw into the hands of Reynolds here. It'll be a gain of five, and it's second down. Throwing again is Goff. Over the middle and taken in by Laporta. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. This is first and goal and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Goff. And that is caught. Touchdown, Detroit. Josh Reynolds from four yards out. And the Lions are on the board here in the final minute of the first half. 
The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football, full half to be played. This one away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23 yard line. Offense heading back out, and with him comes Rashad White. And he's well on his way to a 100 yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Here's second and ten. Mayfield down. Throw right side taken in by Godwin. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucs have a first down. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Buccaneers out on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a solid first half for the running back, Rashad White. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Touchdown ball game, 14-7. Our scores, we get back at it on EA Sports. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. And the Lions getting set to go on offense to start the third. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well and they've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. That's a nice throw there, and he's obviously feeling pretty good because remember, he had a touchdown pass on the last drive, and here he comes out throwing again, and they wind up getting good yardage and a first down right out of the gate. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. Back to throw, Goff. 
No gain on the play. And it'll be second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Now a second and ten. They'll fake the handoff. Now go off. Well, that'll be caught with St. Brown. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs' 38-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. And it's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far. They haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected, but this is a good pickup here for the first down. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Back-to-back two-yard losses, and that sets up a tough third and 14. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Couple of plays sent them the wrong way, and now they face a third and 14. Goff now looks to throw. And that is incomplete. We're going to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Here comes the Lions punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. Now Mayfield and the Bucs come up on first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll start with the option. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Mayfield now on second down. Now, quick throw there is incomplete. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Mayfield now looking for Godwin, but it's intercepted. Jack Campbell with a pick. And they will finally bring this run back to an end, but not before he's down inside the five-yard line at the four. He had his eyes on the end zone. He got close. At least he set the offense up nicely, but he's probably mad he didn't take that one to pay dirt. I agree with you, and you know he's going to get teased because he didn't get it all the way into the end zone. But if they don't score now, if they don't get a touchdown, he won't just get teased. They'll be glaring at him. How'd you not score? Suddenly, it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. Montgomery is not going to advance very far. He'll be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line, second and goal. 
Once more, Montgomery. And he'll be stopped up short as the tackle is made at about the three. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure. And he's got his man. It's Lion touchdown. Josh Reynolds, the second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Lions take the first turnover on defense and convert it into six points. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Extra point by Badgley, up and good. And we are tied at 14. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And able to get this out to the 25. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They start from scratch here, so to speak. 14 all following the interception last time that led to a score. Well, they've got it first and 10. The drive starts with a run by White. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Mayfield off the play fake. Mike Evans, and this one caught downfield by Evans. And finally down at the 32-yard line. 36 yards on the play. Well, as my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. They'll go up the middle with White. And he's got it down to the 28. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Second and six. They stay on the ground with White. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Rashad White with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bucs have taken the lead here in the final seconds of the third quarter. Uh, he's given him a little jolt, just gave him the lead there, but two TDs now in the game. And that jolt puts them in the lead. What a terrific job by him. He is carrying the ball and simply saying, I want to win. And now he's hoping his defense has that mentality as they try to hang on to that lead. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And the lead is now 21-14.
Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And he will be taken down here on the return on what will wind up being the final play of this third quarter. So both teams trade touchdowns, and the third is worth through three quarters of play. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at Ford Field. It's the Lions trailing, but with possession of the football as we get set to bring you the fourth quarter. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. They now trail by seven after that last touchdown here in the fourth quarter. What a big spot for this offense. See if they can cobble something together on this drive. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. There's Goff. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Reynolds. So the completion good for seven there. And that will bring up second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And they'll get this just to the 47, one yard gain. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. The Lions on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and two. Play action, it's Goff. They'll let this go deep for St. Brown. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Just because you got the lead in the fourth, it doesn't mean you have to play it safe. I like the aggressive play call there to push it downfield. That time, it didn't work out. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. They go ahead and snap it, gone. And to find the open man, that's complete. And he's gonna have the Lions first down. They pick it up rather easily. A gain of nine on fourth and two. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter, they got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance, you stop to get it done as you noted, and they did. First down, here's the run to Montgomery. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. That's into the hands of Reynolds. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Here we go, third and one. Gut check time on both sides. Now a play fake, and it's gone. Incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And he is going to have the Lions first down as the defense couldn't come up with a big play. In fact, they got six more than they needed. A gain of eight on fourth and two. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Over the middle complete, it's Reynolds. And they've got it inside the 10 at the eight. <laughs> I can't help but chuckle a little bit because at this point, 
it can't be a surprise to anyone in the building who's going to get the ball. They just keep feeding him over and over, and he just keeps on delivering. Here we go, first and goal. Again, golf. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Now it's gone. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Third and long coming up defensively. You pressure the quarterback or drape ball over the passing lane? Yes, that's exactly what you do. It's both <laughs> because they're not mutually exclusive. They may have been at one time in football, but not anymore. You want to have that pressure. If you have a big-time pass rusher, send him after the quarterback and then make sure you blanket the field. Now golf. And this is going to be incomplete. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Here's a big one. It's fourth and goal. Golf. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had the play call on fourth and goal, but it's dropped in the end zone. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. So another incompletion on fourth down. They threw it on every down that series, and every pass missed the mark. The frustration is almost palpable. You can almost feel it all the way up here in the booth. But how about the guys who just stopped them on four downs? You got to give them a little credit, huh? End up stopping four straight passes. They don't get into the end zone. They turned the ball over on downs. They more than did their job. They got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And he's going to be taken down shy of the 10 right around the nine yard line. Let's go, man. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. They keep it on the ground right again to the 22-yard line. And the Lions quickly now going to use the last of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They go with White on the counter. And he will fight his way forward to about the 23-yard line. And now the question everyone's wondering, look at the clock late fourth quarter. Do they put the ball in the air here on third? I don't. I run the football. I tell my offensive line, no leakage up front. I want my running back hit as I hand the ball off to him. I don't want any type of an issue. But if I am going to throw it, quick throw out to the perimeter, maybe one of my best receivers running a quick slant or something like that. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now, as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon.
This is taken at the 18. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before we hit triple zeros. This is first and 10. One last throw here for Goff. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. And a fun, close ball game comes to an end. On that last play, Charles, they were on the wrong side of midfield. They needed something near a miracle, and they couldn't get it done. Yeah, the effort, that was good. Very good, in fact. They were just a little too far out to get a decent look at the end zone for that last opportunity. Couldn't get it done, but a nice game overall. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say so long, everyone, from Ford Field.